Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today I'm going to be building a Tesla coil plasma speaker. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we have a very special video. We're going to be building a Tesla coil plasma speaker. Just a heads up, if you find this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week, and let's get straight into it. For a little background knowledge, this is also known as the singing Tesla coil, sometimes called musical lightning. It is a form of a plasma speaker. It is a variety of a solid state Tesla coil that has been modified to produce musical tones by modulating its spark output. This is such an interesting and cool project. I cannot wait to get started. Let's go ahead and take a look over this PCB and start putting these components together. Here is your PCB. We do not have a set of instructions, but if you look carefully into the PCB itself, there is a wiring diagram. Basically, we're gonna follow all our connections here. As you can see, here we have conductors. This is where we would be sliding in our components. See, this is labeled as TP41. So here, you know, we're gonna be installing our transistor and we're just gonna follow all the markings. Here, this is a symbol for a capacitor. You see here, it says LED, so things like that. That is how we are going to configure this board. We have two transistors here. The one on the left is a TIP41C and the one on the right is a IRF53. 0N. Here we have just two simple LED lights. Here we have two capacitors. The one on the left is a ceramic capacitor and the one on the right is an electrolytic capacitor. Here we have two sets of resistors. One is a 2K resistor and the other is a 10K. The way you would differentiate them is by paying attention to the stripes and their colors. Here we have two heat sinks, which will be combined with the transistors. Here is our Tesla coil, and this is just a length of wire. Here we have two sockets. This one here on the right is a power socket, and the one on the left is a audio socket. Here we have a mount and some screws, and that's basically just going to hold up your PCB. With all that being said, let's begin by configuring our PCB with all of our components. If we look closely, I can see here it says audio, which represents this area here. And then this area here, I can see it says DC 15 to 24 volts. So since we're talking about power, this has to be our power socket. And if it mentions audio here, this is going to be our audio socket. And if you just pay attention to the holes that have the conductors, you'll see that most of these pieces kind of just fit into place like a puzzle. I'm going to start with the audio socket and just simply slide it right in. Fits right into place and we know that is exactly where it goes. To fully make these connections, we're going to have to solder them. The next connection that I can clearly see would be my power socket and I'm simply just going to push it in. So from here, I'm going to take my soldering iron, heat up the contacts here, and then just solder my connections. Here's the electrolytic capacitor. If you notice, one leg is longer than the other. The long leg is positive and the short leg is negative. I can see the capacitor for one microfarad goes right here. So we're gonna put the negative up top and we're just simply gonna slide this in. Here are resistors, 
if you notice we have a different color pattern so for the two kilo ohm resistor our color pattern is going to be red black black brown brown so let's see which one is our two kilo ohm we have red black black brown brown so these two are our two kilo ohm resistors and we also have a pair of 10 kilo ohm resistors and over there we're going to notice a brown black black red and then brown pattern so that's how we know which one is which these do not have a polarity so it doesn't matter you know in which direction you actually install this one over here you can see we have a 10k resistor here we have a 2k resistor here we have a 10k resistor and further down we have another 2k resistor our resistors are now in place and now we can solder our connections along with the capacitor Connections are ultra clean and we're just going to cut off the excess. Over here I can read IRF 530 so we're going to put that style transistor here and then we have the TIP41 transistor where we're going to be installing here. The metal side of the transistor will be facing the outside of the board, so we're simply just going to slide this in. Then we will be doing the same thing for the TIP41 transistor on the opposite end. The reason the metal, the reason the metal side is on the other side is because we're going to put these heat sinks here and put a screw down. And then we're going to do the same thing for the opposite end. Here we have it, and now we can solder our connections on the back side of the PCB. Next, we have our ceramic capacitor to install, and it's going to fit right into this area right here. These capacitors do not have a polarity. Of course, now we're just going to solder the back side and get this part finished. Next, we have two slots, one and two. Here we're going to put LED number one and LED number two. Here are our LED lights. If you notice, one leg is longer than the other. The long leg represents positive and the shorter leg represents negative. The positive is also known as an anode, and the negative is known as the cathode. So the positive side is going to go here on the lower side. So let's just get those in and solder them. From here, I'm going to glue the bottom of this piece here and the bottom of the Tesla coil and mount it. So we have everything glued down now. You will notice this little thin strand copper coil it's going to go into L2 and then we solder that the last step will be to run a wire around this coil here and make our connection here at L1 and then right here I have now wrapped the copper wire around the coil and the last step would be to solder our connections in the back. All the soldering is now complete. This was an absolutely fun project to do. 
I feel very proud. This is my first time doing something like this. I have soldered before, but I have never put together a PCB from scratch. From here, we're gonna plug in our power source and see what this thing could do. This device is rated for 15 to 24 volts. And we're gonna be plugging in our power source here. We're gonna be supplying 15 volts. And on the other end of this, is just an adapter that we can plug into a receptacle. All right, everyone, this is it. It's the moment of truth. I'm gonna plug in the power right now. All right, we have one LED lit. I just turned off the lights in the room because I'm taking out a fluorescent light bulb and I'm gonna put it near the coil and see if it lights up. Here's the light bulb. Whoa, wow, <laughs> what? There's no contact, we get close and it lights up. That is absolutely phenomenal, wow, <laughs> that's so crazy. Whoa, that's so cool, wow, just, I'm gonna loss of words. Whoa. The only thing I'm noticing is that we do not have an arc so above the coil you can see a strand of copper at the end of that it's supposed to arc i don't see it I'm not exactly sure why that is it might have something to do with the input voltage it says this is good for 15 to 24 volts i have 15 volts applied right now that is the only type of supply that i have but it is quite amazing to see that light bulb light up so what exactly happened here? The Tesla coil works with the principle of electromagnetic induction, according to which when a conductor is placed under a varying magnetic field, a small current will be induced inside the conductor. In this case, the light bulb was the conductor. And with this device here, we created a magnetic field. And with the principle of electromagnetic induction, the light bulb actually lit up. Here's, an, here's another small little light bulb here. Wow, you can see it lighting up. Whoa. More power at the top. That is absolutely fantastic. Wow. That's really cool. On the left side we have our power source, on the right I have an aux cord. It is connected right now to my phone. Supposedly you're able to create sound with such a device. I do not hear anything and I do not see the spark or the arc on top of this coil. They have a name of the singing Tesla coil, also a Zeusophone, Thoramin, or Musical Lightning, and it's a form of plasma speaker. And somehow, musical tones can be created by modulating its spark output. We don't have a spark, we don't have an arc, and unfortunately we cannot test that today. But this was an extremely fun project, and I am just super glad that I was able to put this together and see the Tesla coil from my own eyes, and see how we can create a electrical field, and turn on that light bulb it really was quite something to see i will definitely purchase a new power supply with a higher voltage output in hopes that this would do the trick but this was an extremely fun project like i said and if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe and i'll catch you all next time